There are many people that really were disappointed when the oil paint filter was removed from Photoshop, but apparently it had to be because of the update to the coding of the way Photoshop CC was written. But the good news is now it's back. And it's a very interesting method to create a painterly look. And of course, the results you'll get will depend entirely on the type of photo you have and the settings you'll use. But what I'm going to suggest is that you start off by making your layer into a smart object. That way you can really experiment with the filter. So I've already done that. I've got a stock photo here. I've converted to a smart object. I'm going to go to the filter menu to stylize and then oil paint. Now just before I show you how it works, if you find that oil paint is grayed out in your filter menu, then you have to go to your preferences to performance and make sure that use graphics processor is turned on because that's required for this to work. So the oil paint filter interface pops up and I'm going to suggest that to begin with you leave the preview off because on a large image it's going to really, really slow you down. So pick a representative area. First of all, let's look at these areas of the stitching on his number and the settings you can use, let's put them all zero them out so to speak so that really not much of anything is happening. You can see there's still something happening even at these low numbers. You can always click and hold on the preview to remind yourself before and after. Stylization is going to allow you to go on a scale of 1 to 10. Every time I click and hold you can see the kind of results. The cleanliness one is probably the one that's going to have the greatest impact. The higher you go the more it is very artistic and impressionistic and not just like a photographic look. So when I have a low cleanliness number, it's going to look quite different than if we put it up quite high. The scale number is also one that I would use with caution because of course the higher you go it's going to be really obvious. Now you may want that look of as if you're seeing the texture of the paint. That's certainly an option. And then the bristle detail on top of that we'll see are you actually seeing any of the well, as his name suggests, details of the bristle. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit here. And we also do have the option of changing the angle of lighting. And if you move the slider for shininess, you'll get a much more metallic kind of look. So I'm going to keep that quite low and put the bristle detail and the scale back a little bit. And for now, I'm going to turn on the preview and zoom in using the keyboard. And you'll see this is why I suggested not having the preview turn on because it takes a moment to load it up so you can take a look at it and see. Now let's look at his face and see, okay, well those numbers are probably a little bit too high. So let's take the stylization down a little bit. I'm going to turn the preview back off again actually and just scroll in here up to his face so I'm looking at a much smaller preview around his eye. Cleanliness down. And for now let's click OK. And again remember that because this is a smart filter, it means you do have some options. For example, I'm not crazy about what it did to his eyes, so I might take, click on my smart filter mask, take my brush tool, and let's just get a a brush with a very low opacity. I'm just going to paint just a little bit over his eyes to bring back some of the original eye detail and maybe over his nose a bit as well. So I'm just kind of lessening the filter in a few areas that I want to make sure there's a bit of detail. One of the things you need to think about when you're working on this is that you want to probably stick at 100% view because when you zoom out the filter may not even be visible because we're zoomed out so far on a high quality image like this one. So stick at 100% and that's why that preview option, turning that off, can be a benefit to you. Also because it's a smart filter, remember you do have the option, as we saw, we already talked about painting on the mask. I can also double click here to lower the opacity. So we're just fading out the filter completely just a little bit. Let's come over here, scale back up to his face, experiment to see. I like that. A little better, still giving me a painterly effect, but it's not quite as intense. And I could also even try changing the blend mode so now the filter is only in a particular blend mode, which 
honestly, most of the time with this filter is probably not going to give you the results you want, but it's well worth experimenting because you just never know. Now, overall, I got to say, I'm very happy that the oil paint filter is back. Having said that, a couple of things. I find that most of the time, the oil paint filter is not the end of the process, it's the beginning. So on top of that, I might do a little bit of additional work with something like the mixer brush tool just to try and give the effect that I want. Secondly, if I had one wish for the oil paint filter, which I hope they consider adding in the future, and that is the ability to make presets. Because when you find a combination of settings you might want to use in the future, it'd be nice to have those as a preset so that I can always remember what the numbers were. But overall, it's pretty cool and I can find myself experimenting with it and going in and using, taking advantage of that smart filter to say, let's try some different settings and see what we get. And yes, you can apply a, a smart filter like the Ulpane filter to a video. You just have to take the video clip into Photoshop, convert it to a smart object, and when you apply the filter, I know it's a little weird, but you can do it.